could I have a kiss, Charlie Pup? Could I, could I have a kiss? She's not big on the giving Eric a kiss thing. But perfect day. It's like the second day of spring, but we still have a lot of snow here. But the sun's out. It's not too windy. I've got my pruners, and we have an apple tree. And when's the best time to prune? When you have your pruners in your hand. Make, fix, grow, cook. Garden fork. This is an old school apple tree that's been here years, a long time. This has been here before we moved in. Um, I've cleaned it up a number of times. It's starting to die along the main trunk, but it still gives off some fruit. And I just thought I'd walk you through how I do pruning. This will apply to all sorts of trees. This happens to be a fruit tree, but it'll work for lots of things. Oh, hold on. Can I help you? They're waiting for the camera operator to come on. But in the meantime, we've got some work to do here. So we've got broken limbs. We've just got a ton of crossing branches here. Um, this thing is a giant bramble. I did not prune it last year. So you can see, sometimes they're called water sprouts. The ones that are going straight up, that needs to come out. You want, I want like an arching habit here. It depends on the tree you're working on. But let's just talk about a couple of red flags that you should look for when you're pruning. This is what I mean when I'm talking about crossing branches. Basically, if they're crossing, uh, these will rub, this will rub, uh, damage the bark. It's basically a bad thing. So you want to, you have to kind of figure out, okay, which of these branches has got to go. And this one, because this is shooting downward, Actually, I'll probably just take both of these out. But when you see two branches crossing, you need to cut one or both of them. That's a big decision maker. Um, this is just a stick that's stuck in there. Who's this? Yeah. But again, you can see here, I mean, you can take your little hand pruners and just cut away this. You don't need the big loppers. But this is all going to start to become a problem here. You want to figure out which of these branches to cut. So let's talk about how to cut bigger branches that are too big for your loppers. And you don't just want to cut it and let it fall because you can strip the bark. So let's see if I, if I cut this, we run the risk of this dropping down like this. And then this is an exaggeration, but it does this, it strips the bark. So you don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you how to cut it so it doesn't strip the bark. And that is, maybe we should do it on a new limb. Um, we'll find another limb. So your first cut is underneath. Well, if you can get that blade under there. So your first cut is going to be underneath. And that will keep the bark from ripping down this way. The second cut is about an inch away on the top. And that allows that, because if the bark then strips like that, so this cut here kept that bark from stripping all the way back to the tree here. So then you finish the cut and you've only got a little stub of the limb left and that won't damage and tear the bark. There you go. It is really important to have quality tools. I'll link below the video here to some tools that I use. Um, the cross cut hand pruning saw is really important. If you buy a cheap one, you're gonna regret it. Um, they get stuck, they just don't cut. Learn from me, I bought the cheap one, and you know what? It's in the shop. This one is in my pocket, or it's in the tree here. Anything that's broken or damaged, take that off. I like to use what are called bypass pruners um, for, this is essentially live tree cutting. They also make a kind of pruners called anvil, which have a blade and a flat surface like an anvil. Um, those are usually more for deadwood. This bypass one is, I think it's called compound because it's leveraging your power here to make it cut 
even stronger, better. That's the word. Anyway, I'll link below to the kind of loppers I like, but we're gonna just make, well, we're gonna put a dent in this. The sun's going down, um, but make some work on this. A lot of times you're gonna be looking at just a bramble of stuff and trying to figure out what's the best thing to do. Um, there aren't a lot of huge mistakes you can make, apple trees especially, but trees grow, boom, out. Um, you wanna, this stuff that's pushing toward the ground, I wanna get rid of because first, we have gotta be able to get the tree, the string trimmer under here or a mower under here. You generally don't want branches touching the ground anyway because there's gonna be fruit on them. Uh, even not a non-fruiting tree, you don't want that. So you can think about it, but sometimes you just have to do it. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna put the camera on the tripod and do some pruning, okay? <laughs> the camera operator has joined us, added bonus. Hello. So I'm just gonna be cutting and the camera operator is going to be asking constructive questions. <laughs> he hopes. <laughs> Why do you have to prune the apple tree? Um, well, that's actually a good question. Let me show you. So all these branches here are crossing. And imagine all these branches full of leaves. And then imagine it raining. And when it rains, the moisture is held on the leaves. If there's not a lot of good airflow through here, it can create molds. Fungal diseases love that kind of thing. So a lot of trees, I think you need air going through. You do. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to by some judicious cutting, we're going to allow air to, we're gonna open this up, get rid of the crossing stuff. And uh, that's one reason why you prune. Now the prune is to take dead material out. You don't need to paint whatever you cut, you know, the fresh wound. The tree will create a chemical barrier there very quickly. But you wanna just get the dead stuff out because that can harbor disease. It's also an entry point for insects, which is a bad thing, like carpenter ants or something to move in, bad thing. For your smaller stuff, get nice hand pruners, okay? I'll link below the ones we like. Are those mine? Um, no, they're mine, it says Eric. This is clearly dead, so this, take this out. Timber. Nice clean cut, that'll grow over. This is an example of the tree growing over a cut. This is new bark covering where we cut a year or two ago. There's a Labrador at my feet with a ball. It wasn't far enough, was it? No. They're called water spouts. This is a perfect example of one here. Yeah, it just... It's going straight up. Yeah. And you want, well, for fruit trees, you usually want kind of an arching habit, and straight up is not good. There you go, gone. Wow, there's a lot of work here. I didn't prune this last year, and it's just kind of like... I'll be back in a half hour, see how you're doing. Yeah. By then I will have uh, lost focus. You know what that's like. So again, they're shooting straight up, so we want to cut these out. That's easy. Sometimes you have to take out big ones. I don't like to do it a lot, but this was crossing the other one. It would have been a bad thing a couple years from now. So we'll give it to a Labrador. What do you think? All right. Charlie. This is my chipper shredder here. Really? <laughs> so I learned from you guys. You have some hints. I would love to hear about tree pruning in your world below in the notes. There'll be some other videos floating here you can click on and just go out and make it a great day, all right? Do something cool. Have a good weekend. Make sticks. Yeah. Pick up sticks.